Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. We're going going retro today. We have a beautiful old Ocean City 210 reel. It's pretty rare. It, uh, it's almost as rare as the Penn counterpart, which would be the Penn Sailfisher. And uh, I got this one in a box of reels that I recently purchased. Uh, it it has, a, has a little bit of a problem here. When you go to back pedal the reel, the, uh, the handle's turning. So something's sticking here. It just might be accumulated grime. Uh, could be something more serious. So I'm going to take the reel apart. I'll show you if you have an Ocean City, uh, regardless of which one it is. These, I believe these formats are going to be fairly similar in nature, <laughs> whether it's the 112 or in this case the 210. Uh, and we'll go ahead and work on this one. This is a big game reel for the ocean. Uh, it was by Ocean City in Philadelphia. Ocean City was actually formed before Penn Reels. And uh, I understand a lot of employees over time, including the founder of Penn Reels, uh, worked for Ocean City at one point. So a lot of the designs are similar in nature. And uh, they're not identical, but uh, you, know, you can imagine that uh, if you've been doing this kind of machining, it, uh, it didn't change by much. So I'm going to go put a protective glove on. I'll show you how to, to work on and service this Ocean City reel. One of the nice things about the Ocean City is you don't need to go out and buy a, 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 a handle nut wrench or look for the one that came in the box. Most of the Ocean City wrenches are right on the, uh, the handle. So you start by removing this, uh, this set screw here and then this is your handle wrench, which is kind of neat. They were actually forward thinking there. So we're going to take that off. And uh, we'll take the handle off. And then we'll take the drag knob uh, star adjuster off. And interestingly enough, like the Sailfisher, I believe this is a, is a drag stock that just comes out. Yep, there you go. Uh, a little bit different in the uh, Sailfisher, but the nice thing about this one is that you can service all of these drags without taking the rest of the reel off. So that's that's a, a nice feature to have here. But let's go inside. I'll, uh, we'll come back and service these drags, but let's go inside and uh, show you how the insides of these work. Uh, I'm going to... I haven't had this particular reel apart. Um, I've had Ocean Cities apart quite a few years ago, but right now they're they're more collectible than they are fishable. Uh, you don't see too many folks out there fishing these reels today. Uh, pri primarily because parts are no longer available for them. Ocean City as a manufacturer went out of business uh, where Penn has survived. And Penn, you can still get the parts on a lot of these old reels. And the nice thing about uh, these reels in general, how do you like that? They did the same thing here. Uh, one of the things you find uh, with pen reels is that the side plate uh, crossbar screws are longer than the, the screws on the, um, the reel seat, and sure enough, it's the same thing with this. So some design carryovers there as well. Okay, we can just pull this off now. We should be able to just pull this off now. There we go. And I notice that spool is sticking on the way out, so I'm going to guess that's probably why this doesn't free spool well. Uh, there's a, looks like there's a lot of accumulated dried grease and that's not uncommon uh, for reels when they sit for some time so I'm taking some some 4.0 steel wall and I'm just cleaning those shafts right now this uh, this back of this spool looks like every other Ocean City whether it's the, uh, the 112 or any of the names like uh, uh, Bay City and the like, uh, some of their brands uh, or some of their model numbers. Yeah, there's just a lot of accumulated uh, dried grease on this one. I'm going to assume that's what's keeping this spool engaged uh, when it goes into free spool. So I'm going to use just a, a, a little screwdriver here to try and clean some of that uh, accumulated grease off of that. Could use a razor knife if you liked. And then I'm just going to go back again with that steel wall. You could use um, um, WD-40 to loosen that if you wanted to, but it looks like I've been able to get that off. So I'm just going to set that aside. Uh, since we're in here, we might as well lubricate this reel. I'm going to do that by using some blue grease into the spool uh, bushing there. I, uh, I don't know if this is sacrilegious with um, Ocean City, but I'm using a pen grease. Um, 
this reel hardly looks used. This chrome is bright and shiny. This clicker is not worn. Uh, it's got pretty fresh line on it, but I'm going to guess this reel has not been fished. And I'll come back later and I'll clean up all this chrome and make it look nice. But for now, I uh, just wanted to show you the servicing of this. So this is kind of what an Ocean City reel looks like. This is your free spool release and it's done by pulling this lever out. I've seen people actually rip these reels off trying to push these forward or backwards like you would with a pen spool release. That's not the case. These, these come in and out. And when you go pull it out, it disengages this from the spool carrier. These two slots line up with the the slots in the back of this spool here that disengage and it allows this to spin freely. Uh, so we're going to take this apart. Now, point of note here, you do not need to take the top bridge plate screws off to get the bottom bridge out. However, you do need to take the free spool transition piece off to do that. So I'm going to remove the bottom screws, but not the top. That's different than the, uh, than the way pen works. You'll see that there's uh, uh, through uh, nut holders in the back of these. And as you can probably notice in the background there, I'm putting all my parts into a parts tray. Uh, it's the bottom of a milk jug. But I recommend that you take all your small parts and do just that, so that when you reassemble the reel, you'll be able to find uh, the parts without looking around and uh, knocking them uh, where they can't be found. So I'm gonna take the bottom of that off, but now you have to take the top off. To do that, we push down on that uh, main gear just to get it, grab a hold of it and we're going to take the nut out. Now that nut goes through to the lever back here so you want to be careful to uh, hold that lever because it is going to come out at the end. And then behind this is the transition piece here. Put that. You're going to have two springs which sit in grooves almost like the way that the pen springs do. And then you have the two springs riding on the post that enables this to go up and down. Again, we're going to do a, just a general service on this. Now, there's nothing left in here uh, because I took the drag stack out uh, in that cylinder, but I'm going to push this out just to show you what that looks like. And we can... Uh, can go ahead and we can loop that up as well. There's parts all over the place here, which is why a parts tray works well. So this spring actually holds the anti-reverse. The anti-reverse is working. This uh, this main gear here, very, very dry, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and, and use some of that blue grease again, just to uh, get some lubrication on this. I'm also gonna check, this is, you know, back in the days when they, uh, they these things were well made. This looks like it's a brass gear. I'm just checking the teeth now and uh, lubricating this thing up and uh, it looks, looks perfect actually. Uh, this is the collar. You would see similar collar in a pen gear, a little bit different in terms of how the, uh, the spool gear works, but this one's got accumulated junk on it. So I'm kind of thinking that's probably why this thing wasn't free spooling well. So again, I'm just going to take the, uh, the steel wall and I'm going to just pull off the excess grime. That's another reason for uh, wearing this. Uh, the collar looks good, so we're just gonna go ahead and spread a little bit of blue grease on the collar, just to enable that, that spool gear uh, to run well. You're gonna reinsert that. And then this goes behind. That doesn't require any lubrication. That's a mechanical setting. But I do want to look again at the spool gear, check to make sure all those teeth are there, not bent or, uh, or damaged, and they're not. So I'm just going to set that aside for a moment. And then uh, we'll reinstall this. So we're going to reinstall that simply by turning it around and setting it in there. There's no fancy way to set the dog, uh, the anti-reverse dog, because the uh, it's attached by the back here on the springs. Okay, so we want to go back and get those two big screws that were the bottom screws to this. We're going to go ahead and put that in. And again, this works for almost every Ocean City that I've ever opened up out there, short of the direct drives which don't have the, um, the spool gear. This drag system is different on this one. So if you open up the other ones, like the 112, uh, Ocean City or the uh, Bay Cities or that, you're going to find a drag stack that's very similar to a Penn Long Beach. It'll have the uh, 
the main gear and the drags will sit inside that main gear. Okay, there's a little bit more of some dried grease here. So I'm going to go ahead and scrape that off, making sure that I don't leave it in the reel itself. And then I'm just going to use a cotton swab and a little bit of WD-40 on that uh, the other spool bushing there just to clean the crud out of that. That may be why it's sticking as well. And to, to finish off on that, uh, that dried white grease there. So we're in good shape there. That's uh, much cleaner than it was. It's a little house cleaning there, right? Uh, doesn't hurt. Okay, so that looks nice. And we can take this and we can put this back in. You simply align the, the holes with the top posts. And it gets a little tricky. Sometimes you have to pull down on the spring from behind in order to get that seated properly. Um, you just kind of have to play with it a little bit. But eventually you get it. There we go. So we got it there. Then this one sits on top on the inside. Oops, we're going to need the screws, uh, the springs. The springs go in those um, recesses followed by that hole down. And then the only thing we're missing is from behind here now is that lever. That lever goes in the square, holds it, and then that hole will line up with the hole here. Now, this is a good time to tell you, I've worked on these reels in the past, as you can probably tell. It's, uh, it's coming back to me pretty quickly, but if, if you've never worked on one of these reels and you're a little bit anxious about uh, where all the pieces and parts go, take pictures along the way. Take out your cell phone, take out your, uh, your little digital camera or whatever, take pictures. That way you can be assured to uh, have a reference point that you can look back on. Okay, so we're just going to pull in and you can notice that it's operating properly. So we've cleaned the spool, we've lubed the back of the reel. We're going to uh, wind this up, put the spool back in, and put the plate back on. We'll go over and look at that drag, see what's going on in there. I suspect that that drag is is worn. I'm hopeful that it, uh, it's like the spin push, just a very thick drag that uh, is going to enable me to uh, work on that uh, relatively easily. I'm just putting a light coating of uh, blue grease onto the shaft there. We're going to line this up. There's some side plate holes we want to line up. Okay, there we go. And then, just like uh, with the pen reel, the three long ones, this has just got four screws into the side plate. The three long ones go into the cross post, then this shorter one goes into the real seat here. And we just tighten those down. And uh, these are great reels, so you can see that there's quality construction in this. There's there's brass gearing. It's high high qualified, uh, high quality machined cut gears, uh, solid frame. Uh, nice chrome work on it. There's no reason that this could go fishing or couldn't go fishing. Uh, most of them, as I mentioned, are, are pretty collectible today. But, uh, you know, that's a uh, personal choice. Okay, let's see what's going on in the drag stack then. That's the last part of the service here. Uh, they pushed out. Yeah, they're, uh, they've all dried. This is a, um, a common problem with aged reels. Uh, the grease dries and freezes the the drag washer to the uh, uh, the metal washers within them. We're going to see if we just can't uh, unfree those uh, easily. And so what I'm doing now is I'm just cleaning the base. It's got some discoloration, but it doesn't look like there's anything that, that would be uh, inhibit the drag performance here. Just uh, take care of a little bit of house cleaning again, just using a screwdriver. Nothing fancy here, just as a scraper. You can see that there's some discoloration, but there's no uh, no pieces and parts under there. And there's two uh, indentations there that these studs are going to line into, like that. And then the uh, these are stuck. So if we do this right, we're going to be able to unstick these with a uh, razor knife. Be careful if you're using one of these. You don't want to uh, cut yourself, obviously. There you go. And uh, let's see if we can get the next one. I'm kind of crossing my fingers because I'm going to guess that these are pretty rare and, and hard to replace if I actually need the, need the drag washer. 
but the nice thing about it is these are very thick and as a result of uh, being thick they uh, they can stand a lot of wear and uh, we can get by with these okay so one more stuck here that's why your drags aren't operating properly so this is a good time to tell you you do have a, a drag washer wheel this is why you want to back your drag washers off when you're done with your fishing trip so that they don't uh, have the grease uh, dry up over the winter time or whatever and then have it almost impossible to uh, to maintain. Okay, so I'm cleaning these again. These are nice stainless uh, washers so they clean up very easily just with the steel wool. If you need it to be a little bit more aggressive you could use a metal cleaner on here, a chrome polish for example, but in this case there's uh, the parts that stu stuck to these washers are coming off pretty quickly and easily so I'm just going to continue doing that. Okay, clean that one. And this has got the same kind of setup in the drag washers as Penn. So like I said, I think the guys went cross town on you in Philadelphia there. They carried a couple of ideas forward. You have uh, two round washers with a, uh, uh, an eared washer in the middle. This is the last one here. Okay, so we're clear. And then what you want to do on these is you want to make sure that uh, as we go and reinstall that you use drag grease on these to keep them lubricated and slippery and in this case that's a cow's universal drag grease it's available in the market i recommend it i use it and uh, if you're uh, if you're looking for uh, good performance i would tell you go ahead and do that okay so this is another reason i wear the protective glove i like to work the, the grease into the the drag washer and then we seat that. Let me just put a little bit on the back of this one too. It's been a long time since these washers have had uh, lubrication so why not. And next up we do the same thing. We're going to repeat that the, the three times for the washers. And work it in to make sure it's, it's coated all around. We're going to go for the eared washer this time. That's the middle washer. Last washer. So move on both sides. Work it in. Get that on there. And again, if you were taking pictures, if you didn't know what was going on here in the reel itself, I'll put some on this. This is more like a, a kind of a composite there. And there's a cap washer just like uh, just like pen. How do you like that? Huh? But they're not pen reels, right? Uh, they're made in Pennsylvania. They're made by a company that came earlier than Penn did. Uh, but it's a uh, it's a quality reel, quality product nonetheless. And uh, I'm anxious. I'm going to go online and find out exactly when this reel was sold. Uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if this was sold in the 50s. Okay, and put the drag washer knob back on, grab the handle, the handle nut, and again the, the problem I was trying to fix here was that the spool did not free spool and it looked like there was a lot of tarnish and things there and uh, the uh, looked like if I cleaned the tarnish that we were going to free spool and as long as we were doing that uh, it was to go in and do the drag service and the other side service as well. Okay, so that's the beauty of this. You just put your handle wrench right back on the, the handle there. Screw that back in and basically, oops. There we go. For some reason I'm not lining up and you got to play with these things from time to time. Try it that way. Okay. And we'll just tighten that up with a screwdriver now. There we go. So now you got your wrench there for the next time. Oh, this is spinning nice. No adjustments required there. Let's see if we can get that free. There we go. We have the free spool working now. So 
We got a good drag on this one. You saw how we had worked that. I'm going to tighten, um, back off the drag a little bit there. Okay, we got some play in that now. And tighten down, we got some good play. Very good. Okay, so that's the pen. Uh, pen. Uh, see how close I got to that one with the Surfmaster? Oh, not the Surfmaster, Sail Fisher. Uh, that's the Ocean City 210. It's a very nice reel. It appears to be a collectible reel. Uh, very nice condition. Like I said, I'll go back and clean up the chrome, but I wanted to show you how to service this reel, how to take care of an older reel in Ocean City. It's uh, uh, obsoleted now. Uh, and if you have one, we encourage you to go ahead and uh, go service that, even if it's just going to be a shelf sitter, make it look uh, as good as it can look in the current uh, environment. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, thanking you for uh, watching the video. If you uh, like this, please uh, indicate that on YouTube. And if you'd like to see more of these, please subscribe. Again, Dennis with uh, Second Chance Tackle, thank you.